Hey guys, thanks thanks for joining today as we jump through uh, Microsoft Teams and monetizing Microsoft Teams calling. Uh, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes. I see there's still a bunch of people joining. Uh, so we're just going to wait a couple of minutes and then we'll go from there. Uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Before we wait, I see there's still still a couple of people joining. Just why we wait for a couple of people. Um, uh, feel free to ask any questions. There is the Q and A session uh, that you'll see popping up uh, on on the side. So if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in there. Um, happy to go back and and cycle through them uh, at the end if people uh, still have some questions. But feel free to to pump some questions through. Um, as, as we go through, it's going to wait uh, about another two minutes and then we'll get kicked off. Okay, I can't see any more joining, so let, let's get kicked off. So I know uh, our previous webinars have been more of a, a bit of a technical deep dive. Uh, this one is, is kind of a different tack. It's more of a sales approach. A lot of people ask me um, from where we see in, in, in the global markets, obviously Switch Connect, we, we, we deal with, with global carriers as well. Um, a little bit, bit about where we see the market. Uh, so we're going to cover up on a little bit about where we see the market as, as we, we deal with a lot of partners and, and customers uh, across Australia now. Um, a bit around the digital trans transformation journey that we see customers going on. Um, and then uh, a little bit about opportunity oversight, market segment, digital transformation, key triggers and drivers we see and what is driving people to uh, move down the transformation journey. And then at the end, we'll jump into a bit around the Switch, Switch Connect offering just to go over that again. Um, and then some of the benefits and buyers profiles that we see. Um, so let's jump into it. There's a fair bit of content here. Uh, it will be recorded um, and it'll be up on our, our, our YouTube channel uh, straight after this. Um, 
please also note if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, there's a bunch of new content coming out uh, quite regularly. We've got a whole Teams 101 series um, content that will be coming out next week. So make sure you, you subscribe to that. Uh, and also our, our Twitter and LinkedIn profiles as you'll get all the latest webinars and content and uh, a bunch of new announcements coming out over the next two weeks, which is very, very exciting. So um, keep watching out there for all that latest content. So let's get into it. Uh, I actually managed to find this this graph is whenever you look at um, like Gartner reports or, or, or Unified Comms reports uh, across the market, you always find these uh, these graphs, but they're always US or Europe or, or, or global um, graphs. This graph we actually found is actually an APAC graph. So actually looking at, at the Australia Pacific market and what the growth is, because uh, we all know in Australia, we're a lot more technologically advanced than the rest of the world. So this graph is really driving into where that growth is going. Um, as everything in telco and IT now, everyone has Ackermans for everything. So I just thought I'd run through these, these Ackermans and uh, just make sure that we're all on the same page and what we're talking to. So uh, teamwork applications is obviously, we're talking about your collaboration app, apps. So like your your Slack, your, your Microsoft Teams, um, those sorts of full blown uh, collaboration apps. Uh, CP as a service is communications platform as a service. So where it's really looking at is a whole uh, cloud-based delivery model that will allow organizations to add real-time communications, uh, which range from your voice, your video, your messaging um, into their video applications um, and then deploy those applications across it. So this is looking at full API driven uh, communications. So in embedding, rather than UCAS, which is hosted comms, is looking at actually embedding this into applications. So making customer centric applications integrate to, to their, their communication platforms. Now, whether that's Teamwork or, or VAS or UCAS or, or CCAS, but delivering it actually embedded in, in their own built applications to, to deliver that seamless integration approach to, to their customers. So VAS is video as a service. So we're talking here video conferencing, point-to-point uh, -point content. So here we're, we're looking at like your, your Zoom, your WebEx, your LifeSize, your Starleaf, um, all, all those sorts of, of video conferencing platforms. UCAS is obviously unified communications as a platform. So when we look at this is, is your typical broad soft, broad cloud, um, our traditional hosted with Candy. So when you're looking at your unified comms so not just voice but like your sit trunking your voice telephony video conferencing collaboration tools file share and, and those sorts of things um, all comes under ucas when you're looking at, at your standalone apps and then cc as is your contact centers and call centers as, uh, as a service um, so that's really where, where that stack is and you can really see the growth in this year um, and then we'll, we'll push into to the next few years is that teamworks application is growing at double the speed of the rest of these these uh, uh, traditional applications. Even at Switch Connect, we, we're seeing this. We've been doing um, hosted uh, telephony for, for many, many years and still have a huge chunk of our business on, on hosted telephony. We're still selling more of it as customers move through that digital transformation journey. But we really see by far the team's product offering is outgrowing that business. And, and we really see um, the main reason why we jumped on board to get Microsoft Teams stuff out uh, is we see that as the future of where communications is is is, is going, uh, and we really see that, that traditional hosted business will still be there for many years, um, but it's really going to start to downturn as people go to a, a teamwork and and, and collaboration based um, application environment. So where we see what's really driving that is the enterprise march to march to cloud. Um, everyone wants stuff everything in, in the cloud these days. Just the ability to get that elasticity, that disaster recovery, business continuity, that uh, whole ability to not have on premise and give the business the ultimate flexibility to operate the way the business wants. And it's kind of a unique time in our industry for companies like yourself to, to jump on board and really help customers go down that digital transformation journey. And we're gonna to touch on quite a bit of the digital transformation stuff shortly. Um, is we really see that's where the market is 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 driving these days is all down that digital uh, transformation journey, as customers are trying to do business more more efficiently these days. So it's 
It's a perfect opportunity to win new customers that you probably wouldn't have touched first. Um, go back to uh, your existing customers. We all know in business, it's far easier to expand the spend of a current customer with you than go out and find a new customer. So by far, it gives you to go out to existing customers who you're probably already delivering many services and, and internet services to, but now to go and drive that telephony, but so much more than that, it's all about collaboration and, and, and communication and unifying the 65 million platforms that down to one and giving them a seamless anywhere, anytime experience. It also gives you the opportunities to, to secure those, those existing data revenues through too, because, um, uh, and it, it's that perfect time to jump in now and actually be one of those winners to, to actually take charge and, and be a forefront in, in, in the industry. We really see partners who are doing exceptionally well and now becoming that trusted advisor with their customer in that they're the ones they're looking forward to going and going, how can they streamline and, and accelerate their business? So more from they only ring you when, when there's a problem, you're now being part of, of that business planning uh, journey with, with, with the customer. Many people ask us where we see Microsoft Teams fall in. Um, and because we've got such a wide and brass product um, and, and partner mix uh, across Australia and, and globally, we really see there's no boundary in where Teams doesn't fit in. It really comes down to where that customer is, is, is on their journey through, through that digital tra transformation journey. Uh, we've got some partners that um, sell Microsoft Teams to a, a single user um, because they're wanting that seamless ability to work anywhere and have access to their, their, their complete application. They've, they've fully embraced the modern work, the workplace. So the Teams client becomes their one client for everything. They can access their SharePoint, their, their, their communication platform, their OneDrive, their Power BI, all, all through that one app, and it becomes that ultimate in, interface for them to really run their business. Then that states up in, into your small business, so, so you, you less than 100 seats, and then you, your mid-market, you, you're 100 and above. And then even we're seeing a lot of partners now moving into that large enterprise. This really comes into when you're looking at your, your, your government, your large education institutes and, and large enterprise. They're really trying to get that collaboration piece back now and getting customers in a single application that they can communicate anywhere, anytime. And it, it's really bringing in those whole suites. So we really talk about this, this digital tra transformation journey um, and, and lots of businesses. It's, it's a buzzword that's flying around the industry and we kind of break it down to four key things. It's all about helping a business engage with their customers better, empower their employees, giving them the tools and, and the resources they need to do the job when they want it from a single interface. Uh, it's optimizing opportunities, how we can better stream our opportunities uh, and, and our operations to operate the business seamlessly, uh, automate that business, make it digital, make it online, make it easy, that self-service, customers wanting self-service, 24-7 business op op opportunities. We're seeing that huge through. And then it's transforming products. The old traditional products now being transferred in, into digital products um, that people can consume as a service. You'll see everything as a service. You can see Uber has digitally uh, transformed the taxi in industry. Uh, and then you've got all your food delivery services. You, you now see the car industry being transformed by electronic cars. Like um, you can go and buy Tesla online through a website. Never before has worked when you go car shopping, you go online and go click three buttons, pump in, in, in your, your credit card and you bought a car. So all these things are being transformed. You're looking at the pizza food delivery in the industry. Like they're now looking to use drones to do deliveries and things like that. So we've seen this constant trans transformation of, of, of the industry. And now's the, the perfect opportunity to work with your partners to help them optimize and streamline those opportunities. And it opens up massive consultancy opportunities to help them understand their business processes and then how to optimize that. Because as a technology provider and that trusted advisor, because you work with that many different clients, you've had exposure to that many different ways of business operate. And we've seen over the years where you can take something from one industry, transpose that business process into another industry, and they would have never thought about that in their industry because it's a it's, it's a completely different deal, but it actually streamlines their business and, and helps them along that way. So as we look at business, business, uh, digital transformation, we're looking at technology, 
changing the way our technology, moving to the cloud. We're looking at, at, at communications, how we go that anywhere, anytime, any device, uh, looking at big data, um, how we consume this data and run analytics across that AI to actually understand our customer, understand our product better and build better products and engage with our customers better. We're talking about IoT here. We're talking about connecting everything from fridges to microwaves to air conditioning units to, to sensors or all, all around the business, how we can connect that and pull that data in so we can delight that, that analytics. Automation in, in obviously manufacturing and also in normal business processes. How we can take those manual mundane processes and automate them to deliver us not only efficiency, but also accuracy through, throughout our business and giving real time data and reporting 24 by 7, 365 days a year from any device. And then it's also about networking, how we go from, we're seeing a massive migration from MPLS networks to, to SD-WANs to network virtualization technologies. Uh, when you look at we move to 5G now, it's all going to, it's all, there's no big telco switches anymore. It's all PCs, it's all uh, virtualized networks running in, in, in virtualization environments. So it's just servers running that uh, telephony network. I think the other big thing we see is as customers work with their customers to take them through that digital transformation journey. If we sit here and, and look at where we come from for voice. So we had the old traditional phone, which was voice. Uh, we then moved to IP and go, we want cloud cloud telephony. We don't want the box on, on, on the wall anymore. We just want handsets. So the, the business transformations moved to cloud uh, telephony. We then went, everyone's mobile. So everyone starts using mobiles and not using that that office phone. But then you get issues around how do you transfer and, and migrate and, and, and track and visualize and pull that data. We then went to collaboration suites. I'm pretty sure everyone's used Zoom before to do meetings. So whether it's Zoom, WebEx or whatever, we wanted to collaborate, screen share, share, share real-time content. So now we're talking about collaborations app is we're talking how do we integrate that to a fully integrated collaboration suite? And that's where we bring in Microsoft Teams. So we're integrating our voice, our, our cloud telephony, our mobility, our ability to run that on any device, anywhere, anytime. And then that collaboration piece, the ability to join a meeting, video conference, talk to anybody, whether that's internal to the organization and externally. And then how do we in, integrate that to the rest of our business processes? And that's, as you can see on, on the screenshot, the amount of integrations now team has, whether it's your, from a sales perspective, from a feed from Facebook can automatically add to a team. So your, your team can see and action that comment straight away whether that's integrating to your receipt management, your accounting system, your, your business workflow management system, all of that infrastructure can all come into a single plane of glass management. So you've got one client, which is delivering ultimate productivity to your business to, to really grow that for your business. As we look at what, what the key sales triggers we've seen uh, in, in working with partners is, is what's really growing this. And, and these are kind of the six main ones we we see, whether it's from SMB right, right up to, to large enterprises. Normally it's coming to end of life of, of their, their old PBX and phone system. Is that time where, where they're going, well, hey, I just don't want to buy another PBX. That's legacy technology. I want the next generation of, 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 of communication platform. The other one that has been really big at the moment that we've seen is really driving that is when businesses are moving offices. They're going, hey, I'm moving offices, I'm doing a fit out. Why do I need to run all this cabling? Why do I need to move this box and pay this company to, to, to come and move the phone system? And then how do I do that? Because I've got to turn it off at one site. I've got to get the services relocated. I'm going to have downtime. Where if it's in the, the cloud and the Teams environment is, hey, they've got the client on their mobile phone or tethered to 4G or Wi-Fi and they can continue working the business. So it's that ultimate disaster recovery. The other thing we've really seen this is, is mergers and, and uh, acquisitions. We're seeing in the business, a lot of businesses are merging and, and streamlining their operations. So um, this comes in, 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 in into point six as well. So businesses now have 15 different phone systems that they, they're trying to manage and they've got 15 support contracts with 15 different companies for, for one different system in every office. And they're trying to go, hey, how do we get to a streamlined environment from a HR and training perspective? I just want to train every staff on one system. So if they travel between offices, they're all using that same phone. They know how to use it. Uh, it's streamlining that business. And then rolls into the flexible working and mobile users. We're seeing a lot of business going to open plan offices is they want 
their staff to be out in front of customers, go and see the customer where the customer is and spending time with the customer to understand their business and, and help them uh, transform their business in, in whatever the product offering that, the, that they're, they're delivering. So we really see that that is the next driving force behind it is that we're seeing people going out there uh, and being with their customers and actually digitally tra transforming that. They're wanting to improve their customer contact. So they're wanting to take that not only from the ability to voice, but hey, someone wants to type in on, communicate with me on Facebook Messenger. I want to integrate that to, to my collaboration suite. I want to be able to communicate by SMS and integrated apps um, like chatbots and AI bots. All those can integrate to, to a single client. Um, then it comes into how do I integrate that communications across my whole stack of applications, whether that's my CRM, my uh, PSA system from, from the IT managed services in industry or all those applications. And then the other final massive big one that we're seeing is huge in Australia at the moment is the ISDN cutoff. Uh, the copper cutoff is out there. Um, 2020, it, it's, it, it, it's going to be complete. So we're seeing now businesses have to make that decision is going, do I just buy a, a converter box or how do I then go and support this system moving forward? And that's really where you, where you can work on, on your customers and take that, that digital transformation journey, which we'll cover off on later around the products in how you can go and, and help them who aren't ready to go to teams today, but how you can start them on that transformation journey to start to get some of these benefits we talk about and build that into their business. We now look look at the, the, the customer benefits. Um, this is the big one we, we, we talk about quite regularly is it's actually lowering the total cost of ownership. Now, this is the one that I've had many discussions with many partners and, and, and customers and vendors about is people look at purely the cost of what I'm paying on my Telstra bill every month versus what the additional cost of my migrate to teams. And when you're looking at total cost of ownership, you've got to look at the whole ecosystem. So where this is where, where people fail to do the whole uh, TCO calculation is you've got to look at what did the phone system originally cost me and what has it cost me over the last five years to have it from ad moves and changes to hardware replacements to all that from the power and cooling and that total cost to the business is when you actually look at it, the upgrade from a business premium to an E5 then doesn't become that much because of the benefits and the added productivity and the cost saving to the business, it actually reduces that, that TCO for, for the business uh, significantly. As we said before, work anywhere, improve productivity. It doesn't matter whether you're on an iPhone, an Android phone, a tablet, a PC, a Mac, wherever you are, e e e even a web browser at, at, at a hotel, you can get the access to your data when you want it, when you need it. Flexibility is that integration. There's so many integrations that you can get and the ability to, to configure it so differently, uh, depending on how your business operates, is it's really the flexibility of, of that solution. It's enabling collaboration now. You can auto escalate a call from an audio call to a video call to real time collaboration, sharing of documents. You've got digital whiteboard technology now. You've got subtitles that, that, that you can come up on, on conference meetings and stuff. So it's that total collaboration that you can get. And then integration to your apps as we come comes in, in into that flexibility of, of a solution. You can turn on what you want, when you want, and start to integrate those applications to, to deliver that single plane of glass management for your business. Then disaster recovery be, becomes that big one. It's in the cloud. If your internet links at the off, office goes down, the old argument we used to get where people didn't want to put their telephony in, 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 in the cloud was is that, well, what if the, the internet drops off, my phone doesn't work? And they go, well, that's not technically the case. The telephony will still work. It's just your handset won't, won't connect to that. But you can have that running on a soft phone or whatever. But normally what happens is when the internet goes down, it's, there's a lot of construction going on in, in like CBDs and someone's cut a cable. Well, even if you had your phone system on premise, you still can't ring out and customers still can't ring you. All you can do is you can ring internally, but that's not the issue. It's all around what the end customer experience. When a customer rings your business, you don't want to miss that call because it could be the next sale or, or the next project for your business. So you always want that phone ordered, answered. So if it's in the cloud, it's in virtualized within data centers, you've got ultimate redundancy there that you can still route that call, even if it's to a voicemail somewhere, to a mobile phone, to a client. And with Teams, obviously you, you can still route that call. Everyone will, will still have 4G unless it's a massive nat natural disaster. 
which you're probably not not worrying about the phone ringing anyway. But it gives you that ultimate disaster recovery and business continuity out of the box for 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 your business and and moving forward. There's kind of four main personas of buyers we see in when you're dealing with customers and 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 trying to sell uh, Microsoft Teams uh, and modern workplace. So uh, so just thought we'd we'd, 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 we'd summarise them them here for you. So you've got the executive uh, owner and buyer. So, so this is really your, your SMB or, or the owner of the business and, and the executive. So what's he's going to, what value is it going to bring me? What risk is it, is, is it going to solve for me? What efficiencies is it going to, to bring to my business? How easy is it to manage? Um, and how long will it take everyone to use it? A lot of businesses are used to going, well, hey, we're going to take on this tool. It's going to deliver us all this productivity but then it takes two years for the business to roll that out. So they don't see that benefit, that ROI straight away. So how quickly can, can, can we adopt this? Um, you then got the, 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 the user buyer and go, well, what's it gonna do for me? Um, how can I still do what I'm doing now? So how, how's it gonna help me do what I do now? How's it gonna change the way I operate? How easy is it for me to go and pick up? The ultimate thing in all this, this is you gotta remember people hate change. As much as everyone goes, oh, we love the, the latest and greatest, but when it comes down to it, people just hate change. Uh, and it's actually having the ability to roll that out and let them see the benefit it's going to be for them. And then they want to adopt that change and really tra transform the, the, the way they operate. Then obviously you deal with, with the financial advisors where you're looking at your CFO, your finance managers, the, the guys who, who, who write the check for these products. And this is where you go return on investment in time versus cost. So some people look at purely what the cost of the solution is. You also need to look at what time the business needs to actually invest to get that return on investment. That needs to be calculated in. And then around how we can actually articulate and value proposition those cost savings across the business. So when we're looking at productivity improvements, you've got to actually cost out, well, how much, what's the cost of a staff member manually doing something versus what it's going to automate by doing this? So that you can actually return a true cost saving to the business. It's not just around, oh, I was paying 10 grand on my Telstra bill, I'm now paying eight grand on on, on, on the bitch on, on the bill from XYZ. You've also got to look at but hey, we're saving the business 10 grand a month in lost productivity, in which can be more time spent with customers rather than data entry and back end admin work. You then move across to the technical buyer. So when you, you got through the business owner, the executive team, the end user buy-in, normally the financial buy-in, you then got the technical guys and goes, what impact is it on, on, on our current technology, infrastructure, security? What, how does that affect where we are through our digital transformation? What do we need in place to put this to work? What features are there? How do I manage all this? And then what's the support mechanism and process around this? And this is where you can really come in with those managed services and, and project management services to really help them uh, uh, adopt the service moving forward. A couple of key qualification questions that we see here, and this is where you become, you step up from a guy selling telephony and IT to becoming a true um, cloud uh, collaboration and business process trusted advisor. So, so that's where these questions are drive is taken away from, from, from the technology and looking at the actual business process. So we're looking at questions as going, where do you see the business going in five years? From today, obviously the business is constantly changing and we see businesses pivoting and transforming on a day by day basis. So what does that look like for the business in 12 months, 18 months, two years, five years? How do we see that business transforming? What's important of the millennium workforce? We now see this, this word coming up. We've got a younger generation who's tapped into social media to, to different ways of doing business to the old world. How are you handling, how are you doing that in, in your business? What current cloud cloud services do, do, do you currently use? What's the greatest changes that are facing you, your business? What, what's the issues you, you see from the market? Is it more competition driving down, other providers coming out, business networks, different things like that? One of the things to ask is about the, the ISDN cutoff. How's the business, have they got a plan in fact? How's this going to affect it? Have they even thought about it? That like, hey, is, if the phone line gets cut as it will, what will that mean to your business and have you got a plan in to do that? Uh, and then we look at 
parts of the business in, in working out the business. Do they have single offers, multi offers, remote workers, really getting a snapshot of how the business operates on, on the day to day. Um, network connectivity between those offices. So we jump in, in into a bit of the technical side. Then we look at what are the key applications that, that a business uses to run their business and, and what can we use to, to transform their business move, move, moving forward. And then how can we look at to integrate these um, and, and, and go from there? Uh, how do you currently manage your uh, communications platforms? Like how do the ads move changes? So when you're talking to the technical buyers, how do you manage that? Understanding that, and then uh, it gives you the ability to sell the the easeability and management of that. And then also understanding the business buyer. How important to the business is is, is collaboration uh, and working on 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 a single pane of glass for for a customer. So that's really where we see a couple of the questions that if you start to drive on these questions, you actually transform yourself from talking about the technology to actually understanding your customer's business and becoming that trusted advisor that when they want to go into new markets, they you're the first person they ring and go, hey, we want to go and do this. We want to streamline or automate this product. Hey, can you guys come in and, and help us understand the process and then find the, the right solution to, to, to take that forward? Um, a little bit around the, the, the Switch Connect product around Teams calling. Obviously, the bit that we fall in, uh, in that whole digital transformation, the, the, the kind of the bit that, that Switch Connect is, is here to help you is that telephony migration piece. So obviously, realistically, Teams Calling is as simple as selling a SIP trunk to your customer's Office 365 environment. And then over the top of that, we've got our, our enhanced capability that allows you to deliver those features and functionality that the customers need, whether that's around call centers, contact centers, call recording, enhanced routing, supporting legacy uh, telephony features like paging and, and those sorts of things, analog devices, fax devices, fax to email, enhanced call flow. That's what Switch Connect is here. We're here to help you add that product offering to yours and move forward, as well as we can help your customers on that digital transformation journey. So some customers aren't ready to take that complete jump to Microsoft Teams yet. So we've also got a whole suite of product offering. I, I harp on again about Describing to it to our Twitter and, and and LinkedIn feed, you'll see a bunch of new announcements come out over the next two to three weeks around uh, newer offerings that we've got coming out, and that's especially with, with, with the Ingram Micro Partnership, the full breadth of, of Switch Connect services will, will be available under that partnership, ranging from your MBN services, so your uh, TC4, uh, your standard MBN TC4, your TC2, your Enterprise Fiber that not many partners know about, uh, there's been massive changes with, with NBN over the last month and also this month around pricing changes that are really making it costly, cost, cost and effective to actually run out those, those, those higher grade services with SLAs. So it's getting back to those, those old fibers, uh, your fiber 1000, your fiber 400, as well as ISDN replacement, SIP trunking and, and cloud phone system. We really see some customers aren't quite ready to go teams yet because they haven't done that assessment, that digital transformation assessment for their business, and they haven't uh, rolled out teams yet, but obviously they need to deal with their, their telephony. So it's kind of that stage migration. You can take them from their traditional on-premise PBX, take them to either ISDN replacement or, or cloud telephony, and then it allows you to migrate extension by extension across the teams. And we're also launching uh, a wonderful new program called our, our Technology Guarantee which means if you take any of our traditional telephony services and then when that customer migrates to Teams, there's no early termination charges to cancel those old services and migrate them across to, to Microsoft Teams. So it's a great way as a customer, they know they're not going to be locked into a contract and go, I've got to run out that contract before I, I can take that next stage. At whatever stage, even if it's a month after they've signed up, they go, yep, we're ready to go to Teams now. They can transform those services across and, and there's no penalty fees for them. So just to, to, to cover off on licensing again, I know we've covered off on, on some of this before. It is currently on E series and also M series. We should add M series here now. M1, 3 and 5 just map through to the E series. Uh, I will remind you that we do have a webinar on Monday. If you haven't or, or already registered, you'll be out on, on social media uh, again today to register. But if, if you jump on our website, it's, it's on the, the new section there. You can register for the webinar. We're going to go for a deep dive into licensing. Uh, it is a very, very uh, confusing subject. 
Uh, even sometimes Microsoft or, or distributors find it hard to, to explain. But um, being that we've been doing this for quite a while, we're going to deep dive into exactly what licenses you need for what when. Um, so I, I just re remind you about that webinar for, for Monday. Uh, but as currently, if you buy E1 and 3, you need to buy the phone system and audio conferencing as an additional bolt on. If you buy an E5 license, it actually fully comes uh, bolted in already. So you get that full end user experience. But we will deep dive into this licensing on Monday's uh, webinar series as well. Um, this is where it comes into how do you actually monetize that? How do you actually drive recurring revenue for your business as an MSP or, 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 or telco provider? So the first thing comes down to licensing. Obviously, selling the, the, the 365 licensing, you're, you're making your, your revenue there anywhere from 5 to, to 20%, depending on what program that you're currently working on. We will highly recommend that you reach out to, to, to your partner. Obviously, we, we, we've got a, a national partnership with, with Ingram Micro. Highly recommend reaching out to, to, to the Microsoft uh, and, and CSP and Cloud Marketplace team there. There's a bunch of programs that you can do and, and always incentives for Microsoft in which you can get on board and bring your customers along and get extra, extra revenue for, for the business. Obviously, it's then selling the phone system bolt on to, to Microsoft team, your audio conferencing bolt on uh, functionality. So it's that extra revenue from there. Obviously, you've then got selling your the, the Switch Connect Teams calling offering, which, which we'll cover up again shortly. You've then got your MBN and data services, which you can now uh, fully procure through, through Switch Connect, so we can single build that to, to your customers. Uh, so you can deliver that quality underlying infrastructure. We say in all this cloud technology, it still comes down to the quality underlying infrastructure in which you actually run underneath that to make sure that your customer gets the best end user experience uh, they can get. The next part of that is around the services. And this is the big thing is when you become that trusted advisor, you become their consulting partner and you're there to hold their hand on this digital transformation journey. <coughs> Excuse me. So where we're looking at is your uh, consultancy services around uh, training, enablement, uh, making sure the business understands the best way to get out of the teams. Also, it's that initial consultation to understand their business process and then roll out teams plugged in with the full modern workplace suite. So your SharePoint for file management, your OneDrive, your Power BI for reporting, your, your tasks application. So really understanding their business process and showing them how they can get the best value out of their, their 365 licensing. By far, if you look at the two main cloud providers we used to have is Office 365 and Google G Suite. Uh, you really see 365 is really taking that next level. There's new applications coming out every day to really bolster out that product offering to deliver the features a business needs to operate on a day to day and then integrating every part of that to teams. So I really say it's working with the business, understanding their process and that you can find the right application and the right process to really streamline and deliver that value and be able to quantify that return on investment for your customers. Um, the final way is there's still hardware. Um, so whether that's from handsets or desks, obviously with the rise of soft phones, it's now becoming headsets. We now see it's like a 70-30 split between headsets then handsets. And then you've got your video collaboration. So your your room, your team's room systems for boardrooms, meeting rooms, and, and that collaboration piece is still extremely high. And then where we see where partners who are doing exceptionally well bolt this fully around a many services. So it rolls this into their existing many service and expand that capability that you are the one stop shop for that customer. Anything goes wrong on their technology or their process improvement process, you, you in essence become their virtual IT department, their CIO, their CTO, their, their, their technology, their, their, their BA process of that business is that they're coming to you as, as that full managed services. So when we look at the stickiness of customers, if you're delivering that right, there'll be no reason for that customer to, to, to ever leave. Um, a little bit around the, the, the Switch Connect offering and why uh, it's more cost effective than most providers in, in the market is traditionally Teams calling is all done on, on, a, on a per user model, but we actually see this not really cost effective. As you move up that, that pyramid um, in, into your, your SME, mid-market and enterprise, the per channel model is, is by far 
And, and this really comes down of as we see pe more and more people as engaging with their customers in a more rich environment. They don't just want to talk on the phone now. They want to video see them. They want to screen share and show them a presentation uh, and, and things like that. A, a, a prime example of this is many, many years ago, I was working for a company rolling out uh, my telephone system. So I was actually on a, 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 training system, uh, a training course and I was sitting next to the IT manager for Stratco who, who makes all, all your garage sheds and everything. And I was having a conversation and he was telling me a story about how his um, chief marketing officer came into the business one day and said, I want to do click to dial video calling off our website straight to our call center rather than just talking on the phone, I want them to be able to video see and be able to share brochureware and video straight to the customer through their browser so they can make that decision. Uh, he kept putting that off going, well, that's just such a stupid idea. No one's ever going to want that. So one day he, he, he was walking down the hallway, his CEO walked past him and go, mate, can you just roll this out? This CMO is not going to get off your back until you roll this out. So uh, against his better judgment, he actually rolled it out. And in the end, he, he had to eat his words. He's, they actually had a 15% sales increase within the first week of rolling it out to their website is because customers were so sick of ringing a call center and then waiting for information to be sent out. That sales cycle was so long that they actually managed to close sales in a single call because people just wanted to talk to someone, see someone, see the product, talk through it, do the visual building, you know, they, they do the, the 3D building so they could see what it was, sign, seal, deliver within the single phone call and close out that deal. And it's just to prove that as that's a, an evolution of technology. And that's where we see the market going to now. Gone are the days of call centers. People want to visually see people now and, and have that communication, whether that's from their mobile phone, ring them off Facebook, uh, WhatsApp or things like that. We're really seeing that collaboration piece now really drive back into the business. Um, one of the things where we see partners who have been exceptionally successful in enrolling this out is, is proof of concept. Where, where we've got partners who, who are selling uh, Teams Calling as, as basically a run rate product offering to, to their customers and they're really going out to all their customers who want this is really the proof of concept. Everyone looks at Teams and goes, it's next gen technology, but it's generation one for Microsoft. I don't trust it. And, and rolling out a POC is a great way where you can connect it to the customer's tenant. Uh, it's a cheap way before they make a massive investment. They can trial it out and really see the benefit for them well, within their own business. They can try it on a mobile client. You can loan them a handset. They can try it from home, try it overseas. And we're really seeing partners who roll out the proof of concept have a 100% closure rate of those customers. Is once they've tried it, I use the analogy of, of, of of my my six and eight year old child. If you give them a bite of a Mars bar, they then want that whole Mars bar. So you it's you give them a a, a, a sniff of, of something better way of running their business, and then that just becomes that natural adornment to roll out to to, to their business and and actually transform their their, their business through there. Um, obviously, just going back to a couple of content I just had from the other day. So within the video conferencing and, and conferencing world too is the other way. We've got some partners now who are starting that digital transformation from the meeting room and working back. So a lot of customers are going, how do I collaborate my meeting rooms better? So what we see that working now is they're upgrading their audio conferencing, their video conferencing, whether from huddle rooms or from their boardrooms to a, a Microsoft Teams room environment. And then from there, rolling the telephony back out. That's the, the initiating the, the wedge in the door to get teams into an organization is from that collaboration piece. Uh, and then it, it's stepping back then to going, oh, people from their desktop want to join those meetings. Well, then we've got to roll out the teams client. So it's, it's that small in to get it in, get it piloted in, get the business used to it and loving the, the technology and then rolling that back out. So uh, that's all I really had for, for today. I don't want to take up too much more time. I know I've been talking for 45 minutes. I'm just going to jump in. If anyone does have any questions, um, this presentation will be up in, in YouTube very shortly, as I did say before. Um, so please make sure you subscribe to, to the channel to get all that latest content. Uh, and also we will have a bunch of more content around 
uh, coming out shortly around these qualification questions. But really, the, the point that we can extend today is start talking to your customers around that digital transformation journey. How can you embrace the modern workplace and the full spectrum of their 365 to automate operations? So we're talking Power BI, Flow, uh, Microsoft Forms, SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, all integrated in, into that ultimate ecosystem. And it's really helping your, your customers drive that digital transformation journey for, for, for their business as, as they drive through the technology transformation, the communication transformation, the data, IoT, whether that's relevant for their business, really the automation uh, and that networking component is really taking their business to the next level and giving them the setting that foundation for them now to run their business in in into the, the, the next 20 years as, as uh, technology changes. So I do thank you very, very much for joining today. Um, please note, as always, we are always available here, Craig, Craig and myself, if you need us to, to do any presentations for you, if you're talking to customers and want us to have um, help you have that digital tra transformation journey discussion with them, or even provide some internal training to, to your own staff. We are always here to, to help you. So please feel free to, to reach out to us anytime. And as I say, so definitely subscribe to, to our social media presence as you'll really see some update, uh, really cool announcements coming out around new product offering uh, and, and services coming out that will really help you as you work with your customers through that digital transformation. But thank you for joining today and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next webinar. I do remind you again on Monday, it is around Office 365 licensing. Thanks guys, talk to you soon.